Hey, this is Greg from Polygon Pig, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to simulate curtains with Maya and cloth. And that's what I used to simulate this curtain here. And I did a low poly style, and it's kind of um, it's kind of challenging if you don't have as much detail to work with because I want to do a lower res version for a game I'm working on. And I tried sculpting this curtain by hand, but I just wasn't getting the results I wanted, and also it was taking a lot longer than it should have. So I looked into using end cloth and it turns out it's very, very easy to set up. And so I'm going to show you how to set that up now. So with nothing selected, I'll hold shift, right click and hold. Now I'll bring up the uh, primitive creation menu and let's create a cube. And let's pull it out here. And to start with, let's give it 20 in height and width. And I'll just give it a second uh, division in the depth. And I'll hold Alt, Shift, and hit D to delete history. So if you go Edit, Delete by Type, that's the hotkey for it. And now let's place this roughly in front of this window. And with the Move tool, I'll hold the Control key and drag on the Z axis. And I'll constrain it in the X and Y axis just to size it up. And let's shrink it a little bit, make it taller. Just roughly get it in place. You probably don't want it that thick too. Just make it a little bit thinner. All right. So let's actually scoot over a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. All right. So I positioned it. Let's go to modify freeze transformations to zero everything out. And let's go to the effects menu set. And under in cloth, with the box selected, we'll go to create in cloth. And let's rewind. And also, you want to give yourself a lot of time on the timeline. So, I got 3,000 frames here. And you set play. Right now, it's just going to fall. Now, to fix that, we're going to once again deselect everything, hold shift, right click and hold, and create a cube. And I'm going to hold V and move it up here, roughly in the center of the curtain, and pull it out. And we're going to constrain these top vertices to this cube. And so let's just make sure the top vertices are encompassed inside this cube. Now let's Control D, hold the V key again, and snap it down here. Control D, hold V again, snap one at the bottom. And let's grab all these cubes and Alt Shift D to delete history and modify freeze transformations. And let's go to the vertex selection mode and select all the top vertices. And then I'll mark key select over the top box and go to end constraint uh, point to surface. And I'll create a constraint from those vertices to that box. And we'll do the same for the other two boxes. So select these vertices, mark key select over the middle box, end constraint point to surface, and do the same for the bottom. So to the song, just hit the G key to repeat last command. And let's select the curtain, hit Control A to bring up the attribute editor. And underneath the in cloth shape, we'll want to set the self, well, first let's set the uh, self collision flag from vertex to full surface. And we'll want to set the self collide width scale to something like 0 0.01. Let's just start with that. So the lower this is, the closer it will get before it starts colliding. That way you get a, uh, a decent dis distance with that. And besides those two, the three main attributes you want to look at is stretch resistance, compression, and bend resistance. So I'm just going to leave stretch and compression like they are. And uh, let's just change bend resistance to, bend resistance to uh, 0 0.01 and just see what that gets us. Now, instead of hitting the play button here, we'll go to fields slash solvers and we'll go to interactive playback and I'll hold control shift and click this and I'll add it to our shelf. Now uh, this is just uh, I'm gonna go since I have the box select the uh, curtain selected I'm gonna go to list and uncheck auto load selected attributes that way it will stay selected no matter what we have uh, selected in the viewport 
That way we can fine tune these attributes if we want to mess with them. So let's hit the interactive play button. And once we start moving these things, uh, we can kind of uh, position our curtain. It's pretty cool workflow to do it like this because it's very interactive and you see the curtain move around and you can mess with it. And let's really scrunch this one up. Let's see what this looks like. Let's scoot this over here. And let's stop. So let's say uh, we didn't like this, we want to reset. So you just click reset, our rewind button. And you'll notice, well first let's reset these boxes. Set that to zero, set that to one. So the first time we try to play, it's gonna freak out. And that's because these constraints need to reset one more time. So whenever I want to reset everything, I click rewind, hit play, stop, and rewind again, and I'll reset the constraints and all and everything. Because they'll always freak out the first time you try to play after rewinding. So let's do an after playback again. And we can mess with these and just to learn the end cloth system, you can always mess with these attributes and plug in different values and see what they do until you get the look and feel of what you want. So let's just shrink these down real quick. Move these over. Shrink this one down. Move it over as well. And let's shrink this one even more. Just really scrunch it up. Scoot it over. And you can always move these around and do all sorts of stuff with them. All right, so Let's stop it and let's say we like this and you want to keep it. So you can either delete history or you can go to um, end cloth and remove end cloth. Well, actually, no, I forgot. Doing it this way, just so you know, it, it actually reset the end cloth. So let's delete the history and delete all the extra stuff. And once we do that, you see our original cube come back. And your first uh, inclination to get rid of it is to just go to face mode, double click it all, and hit delete. But that actually leaves this one hanging face around, which you can't delete for whatever reason. Now you could merge it into one vertex and merge it to one of these vertices. But instead of doing that, we can go to the outliner and go to display and uncheck, uh, actually just check shapes. And now we'll see the shape nodes and you can see there's actually two shapes under here. So if you just delete the extra shape, you get rid of the original box and you don't have to deal with that extra, uh, the extra face. And, and all I did is just model a ring and wrapped it around there. So you can use this setup to do lots of different kind of cloth simulations, um, like blankets or whatever. So that's everything I want to cover in this video. Thanks for watching.